if you want high refresh rate, maybe don't buy a 4K monitor. Yeah, I mean, but if you like high fidelity images and you want to get that UHD display and you don't want to watch that 1440 Pluro vision, I'm just saying, um, oh, fight me. Come on. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to's, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I've been, that is Jordan, over there is a uh, freshly cleaned squeaky magoo. shock mount just got brushed off with the toothbrush <laughs> it was extremely sexy you, you surprise it, it, was a little, it was a little too sexy i'm oh. telling you man uh, you i'm gotta, uncomfortable you gotta tune into that live stream and come relive that experience man it is uh there might be a 10 hour cut of that in the future wow <laughs> but anyway if you are watching this live shout realm dynamic Help on his form. Cocaine Voltron. Yeah. <sighs> YouTube has kind of went crazy with the ads, haven't they? With the anti-ad technology. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're not, allowed ha- not allowed to have an ad blocker installed anymore. Thinly veiled threats that your account may be suspended for breaching the terms of service because ad blocks are against their terms of service. Yeah, go ahead and try and do that to someone who has a lot of money, YouTube. I want to see that court case. <laughs> like, oh, well, we're Google. Here's the licensing <laughs> agreement that you signed up for, dipshit. So, like, yeah, let's... Yeah, no, that, it'll be a good test to see if that holds up in court. Because it will. <laughs> um, yeah, you might not, not unless they're going against Larry, Larry Page or one of the Oracle Two guys, or right? three months ago. I told you all motherfuckers what was going to happen. <laughs> I know by paying attention. I was yeah. like, do you know how easy this is? Now, to my point, they haven't done the thing I was talking about yet. This, this is just, they're still fucking testing the waters, because you can still fight around this. Mm-hmm. This ain't the uh, switch getting flipped yet. Yeah, the, with the, the web integrity framework thing, the, mm-hmm. like, yeah, that, that's, that's the big no-no that's gonna really fuck shit up. But, I mean, I have YouTube Premium. I've made that choice just because I use a, you know, enough YouTube for, like, research, but- and plus you get YouTube Music, which I guess we should, I should go back and listen to, because apparently we only know songs from the mid-90s. <laughs> honestly I've been, I've been using youtube music for music discovery and it's not bad you gotta like specifically say like give me new shit otherwise it will play you the same like 15 songs over and over and over again okay yeah that, that's that's been my experience with it one thing i'm gonna start doing um for our patrons i've been kind of sporadically testing it out is uh if you want like just a clean produced version one way you can use a uh, youtube dl or whatever DLP it's called now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, YT DLP. Yeah, um, that's not going to be a perfect quality, but we have the option to put uh, video up on Patreon. We're still in that. I don't know if that's rolled out to everybody yet, but you might have noticed there that video there. No ads, nothing. You just get it, do whatever you want with it, and it's going to look fine. Free but, tube still works. <laughs> see, I don't know. Like all, I I see a bunch of people posting about all these. Like, Vanced and whatever. Yeah, and, I'm like uh, I'm, the one that uh, Lewis Rossman did with his company. Um, mm-hmm. He just hired a b- couple of developers and it's like, do this, and it basically allows you to follow one person on all the platforms that they share videos on, including the paid ones. So, very good job on that one. <laughs> my my only thing about using anything else like is eventually it's not going to work at some point. Ray Joy, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do when YouTube just shuts off API access? Like, yeah, oh, I, I mean, that's it's an appreciate name, Greyjoy, because you know, uh, the, old Theon, uh, he also got cut off snip, snip. a little prematurely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Sausage. man. Um. Yeah, had a good time. Uh, we're doing Trek Media still. If you want to come hang out with us? Uh, we kind of got the server. We got a new plugin set up for Cup. So if you want to get some racing on, join us for Tuesdays and Thursdays. I keep forgetting to plug that. And um, I got my camera lens. I got I got a the a, a floppy camera lens. Mm. Which was, it said it was floppy and it was nine dollars. <laughs> is, is it flopping? It's got a little flop to it. So like when you adjust the focus, it wiggles a little bit. Okay, yeah. but like it, it stays put afterwards. Otherwise, oh yeah, right? yeah, no. Well, it's okay. Well, you got to be a little careful about adjusting the aperture because it doesn't click into place. So if you like dial it too far, the lens will just fall off. Mm. Oh, <laughs> but then again, it's a nine dollar lens, so I'd be like, eh. What a shame. Yeah. J- J- JC Denton, what a shame. Dot AVI. <laughs> womp womp. 
anything new and exciting going on in uh, Canada this week in Toronto's land, Vils? No, I, I brought it up in the pre-pre super shows and I watched that new Babylon Five animated right. feature. It, it was it was all right. It was exactly it, it was another Babylon Five episode. You know, it was, it was nice to watch. Uh, I'm on vacation this week, which is nice. I spent the past like four days writing documentation, so I'm very tired of looking at Markdown. <laughs> well, you did spend your vacation writing documentation. I did not spend my okay, vacation this writing documentation. Coming week. Yes, this 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 coming week. Mm. I am I, I am available to sleep. Are you excited to see new and interesting ways people will avoid doing anything? I I look forward to coming back to a complete and utter shit show. Be like, Jordan, (laughs) this thing didn't work. And I'm like, did you read the code? They're like, no. Like, why do I have to read the code for you? (laughs) Because you're the senior. Ah! Uh, uh, But but anyways, how's your how's your job going, Pedro? You're really happy at work, aren't you? He is. All of joy. Yes, I'm terribly happy. <laughs> it just seems that uh, now I have to deal with the copyright claims too. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's you. You got hired as the NHS's copyright bot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got known as the one who had to figure out a what the fuck the uh, copyright claimant was uh, actually claiming because the screenshots that they sent us is like this thing is included here. And the screenshot that they had did not include the thing. And I went to the site that they linked to. It's like, uh, that doesn't include your thing. What the fuck? They, 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 oh, they just yeah. sent you a photo of Bigfoot? Yeah. No, they said, it's like, it, yeah, no, there's a presentation that if you click on this, click on this, and click on this, there's a presentation that has our copyrighted content. Why didn't you just share the link to that presentation? To That's not the way with? my brain works, man. <laughs> no, no, no. You, I have to take a photo of the screen Ooh. and email it to you. Fax it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, after we figured out where the actual content was, it's like, yes, okay, there is something there that totally shouldn't have been there, so let's forward that on to the right people, and supposedly it's sorted now. <laughs> we'll find out. Did, did you send it? Oh man, I, I would have sent him back a spider. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah so, then, then ask for the drawing of the spider back. Right, like, yes. yeah, we're, we're, we're sorry, Just we're gonna send Joe you the Lyson spider. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give, give, give me my spider back. I want, I want it back. Oh, a screenshot with some Google is on it and be like transformative work. No. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the remix of that. <gasps> we, we, we dropped the bass on it. Yes. Let's drop the bass in the horse. Ah, yeah, it goes, no, it's the steam. going to change it by itself. Give it time. Three, two. <laughs> One, no, oh it's my not. god, Why not? no, automation is, oh, <laughs> it, it kind of did, did it? I don't yeah. know. Auto- automation, don't fail us now. Well, uh, you might, speaking, speaking of Canada, uh, you might, if you live here, you might have to drive through the snow in uh, 50, negative 50 degree weather. Uh, and if you don't live in Only Canada, if you can, broken. Oh, yeah, well, I, I mean, that's usually what happens. Those beavers are vicious come wintertime. Uh, but yeah, if, if you can't live in Canada and experience it for yourself, you can play Kona too. Uh, we, we, we threw chairs when we were reviewing games at the, uh, first Kona, where it was, a uh, one of those, uh, walking simulators that came out in the wake of, like, um, Dear Esther and Firewatch. Uh, this one was very, very this one was Icy Watch. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, you walk around, you try to solve a, a mystery and not freeze to death. And they have a new version out, or a new, or the sequel's out, uh, that they released on Linux, which... Very, it's not very common that we get a game that initially gets released on Linux, and then five years later, they're like, oh yeah, here's the sequel. Also on Linux. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the reviews are mostly positive. People are saying in the reviews that it's like a little bit more linear and a little like less sophisticated than Kona <laughs> one. I don't, I don't know. I just remember walking through snow and being like, I can do this in real life. Why am I playing a game to do this? I mean, the first one was pretty linear from what I remember. I remember it being kind of meh at the end because the ending. It, clearly they wanted to set up the follow-up which i guess here it is good job uh but the yeah no the ending was kind of me it's like oh there's a when to go okay cool uh and then the you had the, to do the driving in the snow and it was very restrictive the moment you got anywhere off the snow it, your car like slowed down it's like no you have to turn back into the road it couldn't move at all so yeah yeah no, that, that's, that's usually how driving through snow works <laughs> no 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 
See, this is what I remember. I had to go, well, we had to go check the reviews here. And with the thumbs yeah. down, the big red ones, a sad game full of invisible walls. And like, man, that brings back some memories. Because of what I put in the show notes, what I remember about the original game was boredom and ice. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Uh, 30 bucks for this experience. But I guess if you like the first one, uh, and I didn't dislike the first one. I was like, this is just like a walking simulator with ice and shit. That's what I felt yes. like. <laughs> I, I I mean but but again that that was what was very very popular at the time. It was it was like just before Battle Royales. I think that that was like the hard the hard sort of pivot of people got tired of like low key chill walking simulators and they're like I want 12 year olds screaming at me just all the time. Well, what I can, mean what? some people like that experience of like walk around, scan a thing, scan a thing. Ooh, spooky thing, go somewhere else and Yeah, go 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 see the story and sort of like piece together. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get it. Uh, the thing that uh, always sticks out to me with the uh, Kona series is that uh, can't call it that in Portuguese. <laughs> what, 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 what does no, it mean no in Portuguese? <laughs> Why? Okay, the hang C on. Word. No, there there has to be a Portugal has uh, 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 vagina. Uh, well, here's yes. the thing, though, man. Like that's got to be close enough in Spanish, though, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I uh, between those two countries, like AJA's definitely got to have a distribution market there so th- what the hell do they call the fucking going there <laughs> that that that's the thing uh the um or is this they, just the thing or is this like a forbidden word for like eight-year-olds and everyone they, is no, like, no, 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 that, that, that is effect the, that word is effectively the portuguese version of cunt so uh it is uh very much a no-no word in all situations uh so uh what was it uh the hyundai Co- Kona, um, which they had to re- rename as the Hyundai Kawaii for Portuguese markets. It's because so, it, it, it's so cute. Aww. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ka- kawa- kawaii Desu? Yeah, oh, man, oh the way God. the blood drips out of the headlights, it's awesome. Yeah, we- weeb-tastic. All right. Soulbind up next, Tales of the Underworld, which looks right up, uh, yeah, Pedro's Alley on it, this one. It, it's not a pixel it's, game. I, it, I have to look closely. Not. It's it's, uh, it's very much uh, very in line with Dead Cells. If you're looking for like the closest comparison, like the combat just screams Dead Cells, but it seems to play more on the you're expected to die and come back to life more so than in Dead Cells. Uh, you collect the uh, the dead body parts of your fallen enemies, and then you can use them on yourself because hey, you're just a skeleton and you're killing other skeletons, so reuse those parts, baby. Skeleton, uh, skeleton. Yes, uh, I, uh, I, you know, out of curiosity, for some reason, I just went to SteamDB and searched for games with the word soul in the title. 229, with uh, 149 being the plural. Uh, for no particular reason, still, I also searched for dark. Uh, and there's 680 games on Steam, publicly listed currently, uh, that have dark in the title, which I thought there would Maybe be more. Searching for the wrong type of soul, see what we need to search for. <laughs> The uh, no, uh, with like soup? 88. Ah, <laughs> oh, booze, Valve, you suck. There's no I hot searched souls. this on Friday, so there were 88,495 games. My dreams of a Dark Souls dating Steam. simulator have been dashed. <laughs> D- yeah, that we and, called Date Souls then. Oh. <laughs> and I, I ju- honestly, I genuinely thought there would be a lot more games <laughs> with the soul and dark in the uh, in the title, if, but no, if, if you if you if you liked it, you should have put an Elden Ring on it. Oh, very good. <laughs> oh man, can't dodge rule that commitment. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Beyonce yeah. might, uh, you know, copyright strike you, but there you go. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll dodge rule. She can't hit me. <laughs> th- this is Salt and Skelly Boys, right? Yeah. Um, listen, this, this Steam OS as a uh, system requirement too. Like to see, like to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Play, play that player game on your Steam Deck. I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole when I was putting the, getting everything set up. I'm like, Steam OS, all right. I know it would, there's this is not like a public thing, but there's, there's got to be like a repo with all the uh, open source bits that Valve has used for Steam OS because licensing and GPL compliance and all that. No, there's not. I, I wonder if it's one of those like, you got to send an email and they'll do it that way. They'll, they'll send you the diskette with the. <laughs> I, that might be a project for me next week is sending off that email and be like, uh, where is the code for this? You know, I understand like leaving out your proprietary bits, which are completely falls within the license, but that should like, that is absent 
on GitHub or wherever. You can find it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the you can still download um, SteamOS yeah. 2, the old one. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the Debian based one. I want that hollow yeah. ISO and like you'd if somebody I, knows, I like, leave, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. Be like, hey, here's yeah, where you get Chimera. it. Yeah, use Chimera. Just use Chimera. <laughs> I, I want that Steam OS so I can look at it and not do anything with it, but I just want to know it's there for se- security. You know, a, a little steamy blanket. You gotta, gotta run it in a Docker container, then. From the, from the Linux server people. <laughs> you know, fucking containers, man. You know, here's one thing I'm really glad that people are still playing around with, like, those little, uh, what do they call them? Like, droplets or whatever. Those little one dollar no, whatever like, little, little micro vms yeah because it's forcing them to do shit without containers at least they're getting that you know you can you can you, can oh, run a you fucking a squeeze some shit on there but you, when you're sitting there like that's all i have i'm like i gotta make better usage of these like one gig of ram the, 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 that's why you set your memory values very very small small in your docker compose i don't know that's <laughs> yeah um fortunately like there are other people who are like, you know what? Maybe I need to actually not do everything in a fucking container. But <laughs> all right, yeah. Well, uh, Ghost Linux Busters. DevOps cast is next week. Uh, no, Ghost it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it will be in my hotel room. Damn it! It's gonna well, be me uh, and Jordan, a pillow. Jordan, we cannot do the Vin and Jordan show because I've already thought about that. Because what would the three-letter word for that be? The vag show. Yes. <laughs> then we're like, we really can't say, hey, well, come get some vag in your face, right? Well, I, I mean, my, minor tangent, my username back in college was my first initial, my middle initial, and my last name. So for four years, I was just Jack Wang. Jack Wang. <laughs> Jack Wang. <laughs> yeah, every, every assignment, Jack Wang. The plaid strips. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Busted oh, makes me feel good. That's right. I want to give this a mention. Uh, asymmetrical game. Hide and seek. Pew pew. You shoot ghosts. Take their money. You know, take their ghost lunch money. And this just kind of came out of nowhere. This was like a little drop. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought I heard about this game being in development. And I wanted to give this a mention because it got to get released on Steam. And now we'll get to the rest of it. But day one release on Steam, Steam Deck Verified, right out of the gate. And then I did some research because I was like, I know I've seen a trailer for this and it seems kind of late for this coming out. But this is from the creators of Friday the 13th, uh, the game Predator and Hunting Ground. Those three juggernauts have failed uh, co-op online multiplayer. And apparently, like at some point, Epic looked at that resume, looked at their CV and went like, man, we need to get you guys in for an exclusive. So that's where this game's been for an exact year. Stargate. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's why you've never heard about this game because it's been on the Epic Store for the last year, not doing anything. And um, yeah, I, I'm just going to give credit where credits due because it doesn't matter which thoughts are in Epic or whoever this iPhonic publishing. What matters here, the data point that you want to focus on is somebody's taking the time to at least say, hey, it's Steam Deck verified. We at least took that step, and that's good for all of us. So keep that in mind um but i do look forward it's 14 i look listen a year from now this game is going to be in a five dollar bundle we're going to pick it up and play around with it until then it exists if you want to play it on your steam deck go for it because it's got yeah, pvp co-op <laughs> yeah i mean but i mean bust by daylight looks pretty fun honestly i mean yeah it looks like a, a, a interesting five dollar game at some point and of yeah. course people are even Windows users are already, and I, I'm going to say rightfully so, they're complaining about having to create a, uh, maybe not, well, it depends, uh, an Epic account in order to do the uh, online cross-platform multiplayer thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean like, but I, I don't know. You, you, you can log into Epic Games with, like, your Google account. I don't, I, I don't get it at this point. Strange it's, it's lines in sand, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of a moot point of this. That's a line in the sand I wouldn't cross. <laughs> yeah but it's you pedro like it's like we'll yeah, put that on the yeah, list yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's there's hey. only one sandier person on this podcast and he only shows up once a year so <laughs> it's sandy claus but he's Claude. he's got sandy in the name so yeah. <laughs> yeah man uh good on them for at least taking the time to make sure it was steam deck verified now we do have some game updates this week we do one that's been on Linux for a while since uh, 2014. Yeah, yeah. like what 
Five years ago? <laughs> Nine years ago. Oh, God. Don't look at your uh, hands. Don't look yeah. at your hands. <laughs> uh, Fistful of Frags, a game which somehow still has people playing it. I enjoyed it. I very much enjoyed it when they first released it. I played a lot of it. Uh, it, it the shooting was actually very, very good. Um, but they're still releasing content, and um, apparently the lead developer went AWOL. And... <laughs> They're trying, it's like, okay, if you know anything, please, uh, you know, <laughs> tell him he's needed. Uh, tell him we, we, we very much want him to be, uh, to be back because we need uh, some things to improve how the servers are handled. Uh, so, yeah, there's more servers than, uh, that are actually listed. Uh, if you go to just the multiplayer or the co-op side, uh, you have to go into find servers so that it gives you, like, the usual source um, server list. And it gives you everything. So a lot of people aren't happy because they can't find the servers just by using the traditional multiplayer. <sighs> this uh, gift bugged menu. me a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, okay, how were we doing this back in the day? So I'm guessing they trenched that out and yeah. put a cable under it because you can kind of see it. Like right yeah, there's, there. a, there's like a seam there where yeah. he's yeah. coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking at a cowpoke being pulled. Well, uh, the visual aspect is he's like sliding on his ass, like mm-hmm. down the. Uh, I think. Corral. I think maybe he's getting pulled by a horse. Well, uh, well, in this, they're trying to make it look like there's no rope yeah. or anything to that yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's definitely getting. Yeah, so the, the special effects. If you ever go back and like watch some of the like some of the stuff is like just straight up daredevil work. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, it's so, like, yeah. oh yeah, we, we don't we don't gotta worry about paying these people money. Just throw them off the train. It's like it's it's spoopy season, so of course they have the uh, the Halloween maps, and they have a, what was previously a community map, but it was very popular because even from what I played at the game, I played a lot in the warehouse. That was one of the most popular uh, community maps. So now there's a semi official variant, which is all Halloween themed, and uh, yeah. It, <laughs> honestly i wish i could go back into it but um not run into the people that have only been playing it and nothing else for the past nine years i mean so, that, that's kind that's kind of it that's the people who are playing the game currently so yeah <laughs> good, good good luck right i would kind of argue that just uh, just a little bit because i did you know i saw this show up in the notes and i'm like how many people because i remember the game I was like wow that was like almost a decade ago um went and looked it up it keeps like 100, 115, 120 active players daily. Which, talk about bets I would have lost on that, right? <laughs> right. I was yeah, thinking maybe like 10, 15 people. It. Yeah, I mean, that, there's a, all, almost enough for a viable colony, right? Almost. <laughs> um, enough to populate an old west town, at least. Yeah, yeah. that's a healthy uh, old west town, yeah. For game, I mean, it is free to play and it's been on forever, but yeah, to, to your point with... Uh, That'd be like trying to get into that latest attack in beta. Like the type of people that just, that's all they do, man. You're going to get wrecked. So if you, if could, you want to get you, good. Could you try, imagine trying to get into like competitive, like Quake 3 these days? Like, oh God. <sighs> there what, isn't so what, much what a, a skill ceiling as there is a uh, skill walls. outer space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, 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 there, 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 there is the <laughs> axis and then there is the skill level, which is just perpendicular mm-hmm. to it. So like, <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Steam Deck verification hour is not over. Welcome back to Steam Deck verification cast. Look, I saved you the comment, kids. Because Monster Hunter World is also Steam Deck verified. This is a game Woo! update that I want to give it a mention because I'm going to shout these out every time I see it because they need to be. And uh, Monster Hunter, Hunter with the update 1520. That's a lot of updates, man. Iceborne is now officially Steam Deck verified. Capcom is getting in on the game too. Happy to see this. Apparently it works out of the box they've reworked the interface so it's readable on steam deck the defaults graphic setting performs and i quote well which <laughs> is always a fascinating metric when i'm looking for performance because that immediately makes me want to like benchmark a video card with you know instead of numbers use things like well all right okay ish and acceptable for the bar graph numbers <laughs> mm. acceptable out of five yeah no 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 five just acceptable let's say oh yeah this one's coming up on acceptable and but mm-hmm. this one's only in the okay-ish for over the uh oh, yeah, i i want to do that and it, man if only steam os had like some sort of inbuilt performance monitor so nope. you could see how games are running uh-uh. <laughs> can't do it uh, well that's that's like well it's running well and i'm like uh-huh 
Uh, well, you you <laughs> yeah, use you words have like Mango Hut built into SteamOS. Just fucking use it. <laughs> I'm sure they did, Pedro. And they're like, we don't want to make that. Yeah, that, that, those numbers don't look great. Let's, no, uh, don't let's look like, too good there. Uh, it, it's probably thirty. It, you're probably with everything cranked down. So you're getting seven twenty p thirty ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, on default. But yeah, no, I actually thought because one of the things that they list is that the uh, in-game interface text is now legible on the Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a thing that they already had the, because I remember I tried the demo when before the game released and one of the options was like increase the uh, the UI text size. Mm-hmm. Maybe it wasn't Steam Deck specific, so they just made sure it was like, okay, how does it read on the 800p screen? That the now Steam it's Deck official. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, happy coincidences that can also be features. Yeah. But <laughs> like most Monster Hunter games, you have to deal with the Japanese style online multiplayer, which means yeah, the drop in, drop uh, out, annoying bit. Yes, yeah. <laughs> not 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 going to be, and the, the UI is not going to be super great either. Hopefully, it's all integrated with uh, Steam, so you can just like right click join. Some games still don't let you. Quite do possibly. It. I mean, I've kind of avoided the Monster Hunter of last year. One of the Monster Hunter games was on sale for, you know, a pittance, like three, four bucks or something like that. I'm like, you know what? Let's taste this thing. Let's see what it is. Because, you know, I like action RPG, open world type sandbox type things. Got it. Fucked around with it for, you know, I went through the tutorial and I got out to where I was hunting the monsters in the world. True to the title. And it it, very clearly, it doesn't waste your time. It tells you that it's an AINSTDS, which is an action I need something to do simulator. (laughs) <laughs> you know if you like to spend hours booping on things and collecting numbers and shit it's your fucking jam yeah i, I played uh, monster hunter 3 on the 3ds because i got some friends who bought it yeah. and yeah i i just bounced off it it's just too it's too grindy it, it's yeah. yeah super grindy and but some so, people yeah. like the, you know yeah some My some people brother, just like tune out. <laughs> i love him but uh he likes his monster hunters I remember him playing the the uh, the Wii version back in the day, and he's got I don't I don't know if it's Monster Hunter World or the one before that. It's probably World. When did we get Monster World. Hunter like space? He has Monster like a Mon- Monster hours Hunter Super. In this I want to see That's monsters with space crazy. helmets. On. <laughs> you can play you it know, in your Steam Deck. That you know that would actually be kind of a cool. There, there there's a game idea for you. Space whaling. You got you got like these giant like space leviathans, mm-hmm. and you got like a couple ships, and you got to take them down. What like if they Shadow, lived, well, Shadow of the Colossus style, like yeah. high, it's hyperspace? You got to watch out. Yeah, space whales. You got yeah. chewed, and then they're gonna waste eight episodes of your life <laughs> getting getting nothing done. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> then getting wrecked. Oh, that's gonna do it for our Steam news. We got uh, a tried and true intro into the news segment. Something that uh, we've been doing for our drivers, baby. <laughs> Yeah, this is so. I guess, I guess Nvidia is tired of people complaining that their drivers under <laughs> Linux have been a little a little lackluster as of late. So this new this new version, uh, I believe it is what five forty five dot twenty three dot oh six beta comes with the ability to actually install the NVIDIA driver from the run file in a graphical session. It works. Oh my God. How many fucking years, NVIDIA? It gives you you so much scare text. It's like, this may not work. This may not work. Reboot your computer immediately afterwards. This may not work, but it fucking works. Um... And you know, you know, after after t- we, we we were trying to figure out in the pre pre super shows on how long people have been requesting for this feature to be present. It's been more than two decades, probably. Um, so uh, so yeah, the other thing they added. Apparently, they are tired of people talking about how Nvidia can't whale in good. Uh, so they've <laughs> added experimental support for Vulkan, OpenGL, and VDPAU and X Wayland. You're gonna need to have uh, mode setting enabled. Uh, you need to have the latest version of X Wayland. Uh, you need to be on a recent version of EGL Wayland 170 or over. And if you're on GNOME, you need to set a GNOME setting registry thing to enable KMS modifiers. It's also very experimental. They're exp- they give a whole process of like, how do I identify where the bug actually steps, exists? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but because um, it could be an issue with the driver, it could be an issue with X Wayland, it could be an issue with EGL, it could be an issue with Vulkan. So, uh, but they are, uh, they're getting this out. Uh, we're going to have fully accelerated X Wayland support. And... Then no, no more tiny, no more giant text in your terminals. Pour when one you out, you too. fucking hipsters, baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, your TTY. If you know, you mess something up on your NVIDIA box, and you go to TTY, you get the nice jumbo vision. It's been a time honored tradition. 
for a long, long time. That's don't, going don't to need to get your glasses. No, you don't. And Jordan, you get an excellent point, especially with your modern, you know, good luck buying a monitor that's not UHD these days, unless you're like 1440s. Oh my God. All right, fine. If you want high refresh rate, maybe don't buy a 4K monitor. Yeah, I mean, but if you like high fidelity images and you want to get that UHD display and you don't want to watch that 1440 blur vision, I'm just saying, um, oh, fight me. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying, I have both a 1440 and a 4K screen, and they're both the same size. Hmm? One's a lot sharper than the other, though, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) Yes. But 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 again, I played games on the 1440 because, hey, less demanding. But hey, now you can add uh, you can add uh, FB Dev to your kernel boot args. But wait, and hey, I got to finish the point. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, we need you. It would be big. Now it's not big anymore, which we're going to kind of miss because you could read the big chunky text. On, yes. uh, but this is something you got to enable. I'm not taking it away from you just yet. So you can hold on to your PBR and your American spirits and still live that life, which can, I mean, how many times you're like, oh, thankfully, I don't have to like lean Sorry. into your monitor to like, what is going on there? That is a bit of a pain on AMD, especially on high on high resolution monitors when you have to switch to terminal. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, now I'm at, especially in the in the living room, all right. Now let me take the keyboard and walk all the way up to the television <laughs> so I can see what the fuck I'm I'm, I'm reading. Right. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. That, that it was kind of sad, but I've been using it all week since it came out earlier this week. Put it in. Mm. Didn't have any funkiness with it. I played. Probably a good like six, maybe seven hours of Horizon Ginger Turbo New Game Plus on it using DLSS at 1440p, Pedro. Yeah, <laughs> less demanding. Because <laughs> I got a 3060 and you want to hit, you know, 70 FPS with everything on YOLO. Uh, that's how you do it. And, um, but there's still room for improvement in video. So I want you to step in, lean in a little bit. And we need to sit down and talk about this. Because now, now that we don't have to drop to a TDY to install the run file, which a lot of you are just looking at us sideways, listen, three of the six people on this fucking planet that still install NVIDIA drivers from the run file are on the show. So, yeah, like, we're like, but that's not been a problem with RPMs or Debs or my Arch and things forever. Like, still complaining about it, though. All right, we're glad it's fixed. Um, <laughs> It, it should it should have been fixed a while ago, frankly. It, right. it like, should, uh, yeah, because even AMD's FGL RX, for as shit as those drivers were, you could install them while the module was loaded. Now, in in their defense, they didn't work. <laughs> they never worked, whether the, <laughs> the module was loaded or not. They never fucking worked, but you could do it. <laughs> uh, here's a couple of things. Now, now that we can do this with a run file, there, we we've gotten all the hard stuff out of the way. Now we need that GUI installer. All right, I want some damn next buttons. You got you got to keep the old monitors though. You gotta you gotta make it look like a fucking UI from like <laughs> early 2000s. Yeah, you gotta keep the CRT and the Nvidia yeah, settings. We, 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 we want to maintain CRT parity with our <laughs> existing control panel, but we want some next buttons on the installer. Also, it'd be pretty sweet if we could get like you know require us to enter an email address in order to download drivers because that's how you get Windows parity. Par- mm-hmm. yeah, that makes sense telemetry too yeah let's get some of that <laughs> yes no we need that geforce experience and uh, finally get proper shadow play and proper nv ink support on linux nvidia <laughs> yeah, it's like what's that ip tables we're not letting any of that network traffic to the nvidia servers okay sure <laughs> we do have proper nv encode support under linux uh, timely <laughs> in a timely fashion you know not having to wait several years before the new nv encoder be- being any, in any way, shape, or form supported. Works with the 4000 series. Yes. <laughs> I worked with the 3000 series. Worked yeah, but how long did that series. take? <laughs> uh, day one. I was streaming on it. Same day about the card. It, yeah, but you were the one who said yourself that the new NV encode didn't work on Linux. Now, what you're confusing here is you're talking <laughs> about OBS's implementation of NV encode versus Jim NV encode. Now, one of those does a memory copy, Jim and Encode, which is a OBS thing. It's not an NVIDIA thing. Right. And that requires initially DirectX, which not an NVIDIA thing. And we're still waiting on that. Um, somebody's doing the work on the back end to get the equivalent of Jim and Encode on Linux, but they're having to write that. And again, not an NVIDIA thing. NVIDIA is like, Here's the spec for NV encode. Like, well, you want to fucking go to the OBS project and do it for them because we didn't. They didn't do it for the Windows version. 
Okay. But how many how many holes in pipe wire do they got to punch for that though? Seven. Mm. <laughs> there, there'll be a portal for that. <laughs> no, 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 they've they've already punched the holes, but we don't want any more holes. You guys. I will gladly throw Nvidia under the bus, which I do often, but I'm always going to make it a point like not to do it unnecessarily. Like give them credit where credits to. Like they still need to read the fucking SDK for their denoising and shit. Like they were, you know, the uh, what was it called? The Nvidia Stream package. You know, with the audio, um, R- R- RTX audio or whatever, yeah, or that, that whole package with their denoising, the, the broadcasting package that they released for Windows and they were going to release the SDK. There's still a page for it with the Linux page on the video site is like soon. And it's been a year. <laughs> and I mean, I, so, soon in the cosmic sense, like when, when, when is the next kernel mass ejection? Happening? Well, I'm looking at it because I'm starting to play around with like every couple of years, <laughs> a couple of years, it's been several. This is like since the announcement of like the. 30 series, I think, is uh, when this came out. Because, like, I want to be able to take advantage of the tensor coils for uh, denoising and other effects, you know, like visual denoising, like processing. But see, fuck you, NVIDIA, for that. Um, still waiting. Isn't that right, Linus? That's right, Linus. All right. <laughs> what do we got up next? Ooh, flip flop. Flippity floppity floop. Dual screens. Jordan had spoke it into existence. He's uttered the words to the heavens. And I, uh, Hey, uh, Nino aye, aye, aye. <laughs> said, here you go. A Neo Flip DS. Oh, look, dude, please don't call it the DS. I mean, goddamn. Dual screen. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, it does. And that's, uh, this is, this is going to be well, like exhibit but, A. This is it. The Aya Neo Flip. So according to a leak, I like how they put this. According to a leak, the company just sent me. <laughs> yeah, according good. to this accidental marketing email. Yeah, you, you know what, little plug, good for calling them out because I'm sure this was like, here's something yeah. that you can leak to your audience. Um, mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, marketing email, sure, all right, fine. So, ask and you shall receive. Job, Here Pretty. it is. I, I I sit and gave this a good look. Now, if you're wondering, they have the INEO flip what we talked about. It's got the full built-in keyboard. You know, the little chiclet keyboard. You type on. You got the analog sticks. You got a D-pad. And you got some buttons. This, you lose the keyboard and you get a nice little touch screen at the bottom, which, you know, very, very much looks like the, uh, what is it, 3DS? The, yeah, the, this one the looks Nintendo like the 3DS. DS sure. Lite. DS. <laughs> All right. No, no, the, the, the DS Lite had the top screen and the bottom screen as the same size. Oh uh, the 3DS God. has. Nerds. I said the DS Lite. Nerds. I, I heard DS Lite. Nerds. Nerds. <laughs> um, the entire DS Lite. So, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm having to think because, you know, what is this? This is going to be a Ryzen 7 7840U, which is decent. That's got 780M rating graphics in it. I, outside of the fucking blatant obvious thing you would buy this for, can you think, either of you, what you would use that screen for, for like PC gaming or portable anythinging outside of the obvious thing, so- which is dating simulator? Oh yeah, no, you, you gotta you gotta rub the clit on the lower screen, right? Um, no, but like, so you, like I'm I'm thinking of stuff like um like uh, Super Mario 3D, Super Mario 64 3DS, and like Ocarina of Time 3DS, where um they didn't really use the bottom screen as anything other than just like inventory management and hotkey stuff. So like, if you could have an application, and especially for games that don't really map well to like a controller or like have a lot of buttons or like modifiers or stuff, then having like sort of a programmable touchscreen where you can be like. This is preset X. This is preset Y or whatever. I think that would be pretty useful for a, for an on the go gaming system. Honest for a, a macro heavy game like your typical MMOs, especially if you're playing a mage class, you need a lot of stuff in the uh, quick slot bars, and you could just have the bottom screen be the quick slots. So yeah, you always you, have ooh, you, just this one, this one, just just you, you would need quickly. you would need some like integration, and I I know that there there's yes. one project that like works on Android and it, like hooks into like Elite Dangerous and other types of games where you can like have it act as like a like a secondary controller mm-hmm. or like a secondary display. So maybe like you would need games would need to have like specific integrations for like oh you can have this on like yeah, a lower just screen UI breakouts. Or, yeah, or you can flip stream it to like your phone or whatever, and like you can have or a like, mod that would let you do yeah. it even if it's not official. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty so, interesting. I mean, yeah, yeah you, you, you of, need like, something like that. But your DS implementations, you could probably also emulate uh, the two, possibly three games that took advantage of the Wii U mm. tablet yes. <laughs> screen, or e- even even aside having the walkthrough on the lower screen, being able to 
<laughs> yeah, just like, using it as a second screen and having yeah, the cheats. <laughs> or I, uh, I didn't see whether or not I had a front-facing camera. I was like, that'd be dope to keep like oh, the yeah. work call there while you were um, browsing the web or whatever. Or, or you're just walking around and you have the lower camera just so that you don't walk into anyone. Oh, there we go. Yeah, if it had a front facing, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah don't get rectovision. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, soliton radar. All right, uh, no pricing or availability on this yet, but uh, the Neo stuff is it's not cheap, but it's less expensive than what we've always thought it was going to be. Like every time they come out with a price point, you're like, it's almost like near a price you might consider, which you it's might. It's usually around the thousand dollar mark. I, I I wonder I wonder what their what their like profitability is honestly because like what is what is the demand for like bu- buying these like pretty expensive machines fairly frequently because like you would think you'd like I don't I have my Steam Deck I don't think I'm gonna replace that for like because you long don't collect while. this shit and people collect these things man I like. I guess <laughs> but if again if you people hate money I will take your money I will get rid of it it will never bother you again. Just but, but, but you're not going to come over and like lay on their floor. Well, you might, but I will, I will, I will come to your house and lay down on your floor. So they can take a picture next to the other streamers that, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll bring a banana for skill and mm-hmm. yeah, like, yeah. So, you know, it's the real me. You can do a review on Jordan. Yeah. Uh, jo- Jordan unboxing. <laughs> just, gonna, uh, just show up in a fucking like med sized fridge box. Cover filled with packing peanuts. And you're just straight up fucking dead. Yeah. Just, no, because yeah, there's the plastic bag over my head. Right. It's just like completely <laughs> Right. Oh, you're a fucking cement shoes, dude. I mean, it's yeah. clearly the stuff. Yeah, like se- several bullet holes just like up and down my torso. And Pedro just reaches in the pocket, takes out his toothbrush. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> gotta, gotta clean him. Gotta brushy, brushy. That's for the sexy bit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's going on in the fansly. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Something to look forward to. I mean, I'm sure people could put Linux on em- emulators and. Like yes. to the people that buy these, I mean, apparently they keep on buying them, man. I guess. I, yeah. I, I, uh, I uh, themselves have been doing very well because the first I and Neo was the, the typical Intel i7 that thermal throttled itself to death, mm-hmm. but it was very popular. So right. the, <laughs> Valve came in like fuck everybody, stay up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Valve kind of came in. It's like, ooh, we can take a loss on the consoles because that means people buying games on our platform. Four hundred dollars. <laughs> oh well, okay then. <laughs> also, we control the entire stack, so games actually work on our system. Yep, <laughs> uh, the UI works. Everything is fairly well integrated. Like, oh, that that's nice. <laughs> there is one thing that does come to mind that you just can't go to the Steam Store and download Jordan. What's, what's, what's that? Our next it's- story topic. Oh, wow. Lutris! Yeah. <laughs> Strider, what are you doing here? Aside from being here every week complaining about Amiga games. Well, <laughs> this time he's taken a minute out of his life to write a little blog post and some release notes for the latest version of the Lutris. It's not 5.14. A uh, couple cool new features like easy migration of origin games to the new EA app. All you got to do is copy them over to the new folder. Lutris will auto detect and auto register the games with the EA app. So you don't got to redownload all the shit anymore. Uh, and they were able to do this without having to use Ghidra to reverse engineer shit. So, you know, good, good on you, Strider. Uh, they also added some hardware detection for older GPUs. Uh, there's a lot of GPUs that uh, can only run like uh, Proton 7 and under in specific versions of uh, DXVK because they lack specific hardware support for um, those for those newer versions of DXVK. So um, Lutris will now detect if you are on one of these older cards that has a PCID Based database system and yeah it'll, it'll it'll knock you down to the highest version of proton slash dxvk you can support um financially that's not doing so good strider is saying that uh they're he's going to be looking at some other revenue streams they're looking he's looking at implementing uh next cloud based cloud saves which i'm glad someone is actually like taking that yes. idea and doing something with it <laughs> because it's like it, it surprises me that no one has actually done that before but if you're a five dollar patreon you will get a lutris option to host have a strider host for you yeah, I don't, so, and he's got some talks coming up in the Ubuntu Sun Summit in Riga, Latvia. If you want to go see some very strong people and then go hang out with Strider, you can go to Riga, Latvia. Snapshot in time, leveraging snap and flatbacks to prefer. Oh, you know what? I'm going to, I hope they have chat. I'm going to give you so much crap. Um, <laughs> feature detection for games, letting me, all right. Oh, Nagy's going to be doing a thing. Uh, yeah. How Steam Play makes gaming on Linux awesome. All right. 
So yeah, just make sure everyone shows up and uh, say nice things to Matthew. Yes. When he's holding <laughs> the micro nice microphone <laughs> fucking incorrectly like he did last time he had to give a talk last year. You wrap <laughs> go, the cord go. around your fucking, if you get a jiggly mic, here's, you wrap it once around your wrist, then in your hand. That way it's not going click, clack, click, clack, clack through the entire talk you were trying to give. You can also find uh, a guy call, called Ivar Smuxtex and have him crash Strider's talk because that guy is huge <laughs> and can pick up and throw Strider and he lives in <laughs> Latvia. So yeah, go do that. Lutris is uh, one of those tools that needs to hang around because as great as Proton is, and don't get me wrong, it is great, Lutris does so much more, and for every game that isn't on Steam, if you want to have a chance to have the same one-click play experience, Lutris is the platform that currently has the best support for that. Uh, because for, you know, all the progress that Bottles has been making for all the, uh, very, very nice UI that Legendary, um, has, Lutris does all of that and more. It allows you to play all of the emulated games. It allows you to play all of the old DOS games. It allows you to play so, so much So one, one, <laughs> one underrated component of Lutris that I think, uh, people underlook as well is the, the website component, the collection of runners, the fact that it's all curated mm -hmm. and set up and ready to go. Um, that's like, like, honestly, if I get a game on the, a free game on the Epic game store or anything, mm -hmm. I immediately check and see if there's like a installer on Lutris just cause yeah, point, point out the thing and away you go. It's the easiest way to get the games up and running. Go do it. Go check it out. Lutris.net. And, uh, yeah, let's. <laughs> I'd like to see like less friction. Is there any way possible, like in a dream fantasy world, in an alternate timeline where we could viably ever get like Lutris in Steam? I know that's a it's bit inceptiony. <laughs> it's already on uh, the on Steam Discover store. Yeah, it's already on the Discover store, so you can use it on the Steam Deck. But you need the um... yeah in Steam. Well, so does Str does Strider have a hundred bucks in a phone? <laughs> Uh, so I remember Strider mentioning something about creating the like a console UI for Lutris using Godot or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Which would be great. That would be then amazing. He, he took a look at that. He's like, that's going to be a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's, that's a lot of work. Oh, boy. <laughs> but yeah, no, it would be great to have something like on Steam that you could just download. Although I'm <laughs> at the same time, Steam also goes, yeah, so those. Uh, those Nintendo emulators that you're just downloading. Mm. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like, hey, well, hey, Steam, are you going to allow Dolphin to be on, on, uh, on, on the Steam store? Let me ask mm -hmm. Nintendo. Mm -hmm. it comes back with like the giant, like red hand print on their face. Like, yeah, like, no, turn three out now. Like, bitch, we're trying to sell a console in Japan right now. So. New. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but speaking of Godot, uh, Casiano has uh, some experience moving stuff over to Godot. So. Yes, uh, the developer or one of the developers behind Slade Aspire, uh, Mega Crit, they well, uh, they basically posted up a, a bit of a uh, well, it's a very nice uh, read uh, uh, as blog posts go. Uh, this uh, this one's on Medium. But it is a very, a very nice read, and <laughs> there's a, a comparison here about uh, cleaning uh, bunny poop. The company and, that's um, never made a public statement, their first one is like, you fucked up, Unity, verbatim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's like comparing like statically typed uh, programming languages to cleaning bunny poop. So, no, it is genuinely a, a really nice read. You should absolutely do it. And Slate Aspire is one of those games that I always point to as a proper roguelite. And, yeah, the whole situation of Unity effectively fucking every developer up the ass with absolutely no lube, um, it woke a lot of people up to the fact that, oh, so this is something that they can do. So let's start looking at alternatives. And the alternative which uh, they decided to try, was Godot. Uh, they put out a, ga a little game jam game, uh, Dancing Duelists. It's available on Itch. There will be linked in the show notes as well. So if you want to give it a try, see how they did. And <laughs> apparently, Godot, uh, even if it doesn't have everything that Unity does, and there's still some friction here and there with a couple of automation and uh, things that Unity did very well, which is why it became so popular, that Godot still doesn't have, but there's uh, 
few links and a few community tools already implemented to basically help uh, people going from Unity to Godot, which is a very good thing. A very good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's it's uh, it's 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 good to see that there's more and more resources popping up about transitioning uh, uh, projects like from Unity to Godot, and yeah, uh, it's, especially for Slade Spire. Uh, Pe- Pedro, you say it's a, it's a good example of a roguelike. It spawned its own genre subgenre of lo- roguelikes because there's an entire yeah. subgenre of Slay the Spire likes, <laughs> including the very excellent inscription, uh, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, no, go, going 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 through this process, e- even though there is some some missing stuff. The nice thing about Godot being open source uh, is that like you can get those community tools, and those community tools have an avenue of being absorbed by the engine proper, uh, and. Um, yeah, I, I would think that Godot would also be interested in throwing some some funding or some support uh, the way of developers who are developing those tools because, you know, that means that they get more market share. 100%, man. And, you know, this opens up, a, I want to say strong, like right out of the gate, like this guy gets it type opening because he, 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 what I've been saying, like I'm not predicting anything. Everybody, This is obvious to hopefully a lot more game developers than are being public about it is unity's gonna fuck you like this this is happening people like it, it's coming back around you didn't win anything so we are doing the right thing and peacing out so we're not bit by this later and i think that's very important and the way they did it you know not just sample it not fuck around with it for a weekend as a company they held a three week long game jam to see if they could actually make a game in it and that, that's an excellent thing to do they kick the damn tires to find out, can you make a game with us? And it turns out you could. Turns out, at the end of the day, Godot's pretty good at making 2D games. Which I don't think came as a surprise to anyone, but, you know, they learned, because you're going to have to rework your, you know, imports, models, tooling, all the things that you would need. And fortunately for them, you know, getting uh, cross-platform stuff, they didn't get into that too much, but like, hmm, maybe we might be able to get some things on the console, too, because they have the game porting company. So it'll be they interesting have, to uh, read. Set beasts. Yeah. <laughs> a bit more about that. And they said no massive roadblocks. And uh, what drew them to Godot is what is there and what is growing exponentially right now is that community knowledge base. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he makes a point in the write-up. He's like, I don't want to reinvent wheels of creating a shader to do this thing. Like, that's not something I'm ever going to do. And I want to find somebody who knows how to do that. And I'm like, boom, there it is. All right, got it. And, you know, that's starting to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's it's good to see. There there was a lot of those things very early on for Unity, especially in like the indie game dev scene. So now I, I think we've got they've gone through like a bootstrap process already. So now uh, ad, uh, adoption of Godot is going to be maybe a little smoother because they already kind of know what they need ahead of time. I mean, you got to find out like whether or not yeah. it's completely viable. No matter how much you want to support or get, you know, Godot yeah. or something else, it doesn't mean shit if. If it just doesn't work. Yeah, if, if, you're doing, if you're doing like a 3D game, you probably want to look at something like Unreal or Cry and Lumberyard. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the <laughs> open source 3D. 3D. <laughs> oh, 3D. Yeah. E, 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 e. E. Speaking of E, go for the eyes, boo. We've got to talk about Baldur's Gate 3 mods and profiles. Then threw this into the, to the uh, show notes. I assumed after watching me just completely fuck up on Thursday, but apparently this was just uh, completely... Serendipitous. No, let's call it no, that. I was watching you completely fuck up the week prior. That's when I brought ah, up the camera. Ah, <laughs> ah, that's that's true. Yeah. So after after taking several unwanted dips into lava, I think I think I need a tool like this. So this is actually two things. So number one is Lamp, which is a mod manager that currently only supports Baldur's Gate three, but it's looking to support stuff like Skyrim and Fallout and the other Bethesda games. Um, that that one was a little interesting because um. I, I set it up and it wants you to point uh, point uh, the, the application at your directory where Baldur's Gate 3 and your save files are located. And it has like, it's probably located here, but then there's a little button, there's a little red square, which is actually a file selection dialog button that you got to click on and then navigate through there. I got to ask though, if you already have a good idea of where that game file is, why not just have that as like the default value? I don't know. I don't know. That was a little, little counterintuitive. You're, but, wait a minute. So, so you're, you're going to leverage that from the same... It looks like a cool tool, but I mean, if you're doing a GUI application, that's your complaint when you can like go to the GitHub page and there's not a screenshot yeah. of your GUI <laughs> well, application? A little, little bit, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, um, it runs out of the box. And then there's a uh, there's another thing from Alternative called BG3 Mod Profiles, which will hook into something like LAMP and will uh, can enable and disable uh, modding profiles as you require them, which is nice. Yeah, this was the first thing I saw. I was like, somebody's got a thing to mod pro. I was like, well, how do you do that in the first place? Is there one for Linux? And that's how we ran across LAMP. And I love um, LAMP. Yeah, North Ranger, I love LAMP. <laughs> LAMP is good, man. LAMP is great. And having a profile manager, there's tons of mods. Apparently there's even like a, it's gonna, it, it, it's a great way to expand the game in Baldur's Gate. According to Jordan's got a bunch of fun mods, like 16 player mode. Yeah. That, that, that I, I, I don't even know what running that server is like. Is your computer going to start like smoking or something? Cause like it's, it's already pretty intense running two players. And on yeah. Debian, it read out of the box. I, well, I had to install, what is it? Poogie, Poogie, XML. Uh, P- P- Puggy, Pug IXML, I don't or know. whatever we want to pronounce yeah. that one, but that was the only yeah. depth I needed, and it, you know, it barf that out right from the console. Uh, I was like, need uh, this. You need uh, P7 zip and all the plugins. So if you don't have those installed either, you gotta. I'll find that, that out zip. later oh. when it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Uh, what do we got up next? Up next, we got Pharaoh. Which is an open source reimplementation of, uh, or actually, this one's called Ozymandias. It is an open source reimplementation. <laughs> you, you, you mean it was? It was King of Kings. Look at my works, ye mighty in despair. Ozymandias. Awesome no, uh, Ozymandias pants. My favorite episode, of Breaking Bad. <laughs> this repo uh, is yeah. longer alive for some reason. Oh no! Uh, now, now it's an, an Octen is is the what new one. What happened? It, like this earlier uh, this week, and I'm like, hey, look, there's a great. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, but the, the new repo is a lot more active. This is the open source implementation of Pharaoh, which itself was based off of uh, the Caesar 3 game engine. You might remember that from the game we've been, another implementation we've been covering called uh, Julius. Uh, so this is using the same uh, code base. Uh, the games use the same engine, so it makes sense. Uh, and yeah, uh, much, much much like the Pharaohs, they do, they do take after the Caesars a little bit. Except not really, because the pharaohs <laughs> took after the Greeks, not the Romans. But we're, you know, what? It's, it's it's fine. We're we're, we're getting to it. Um, but yeah, no, this this is another one of these open source reimplementations for strategy games. You'll love to see it. Um, yeah, make sure that these games will run on newer systems because they were meant to run on shit like Windows ninety eight. Yeah, it not and supported it's anymore. A pain in the butt trying to get some of those old games. Uh, to be fair, like I'm glad OpenMW exists as a project, but. Uh, Morrowind still works fine, <laughs> uh, especially with Proton. But the I'm I, I'm really happy to say that they're Damn, yeah, look at them being like a boss motherfucker right there. <laughs> they're just using Julius, which yes, they did the right thing. Absolutely, just take the code base of uh, the already very very good uh, and accurate uh, reimplementation that effectively gets you Caesar three, and just turn that into Pharaoh. Very good. No, job. you got you, you got to reinvent the wheel or or or, or the pyramid or whatever. It's it's because it's Egypt. Man, this thing's so old. It had a Sierra on the box. I mean, come on. Oh yeah, yes. Sierra. I mean, Half Life. The first Half Life was published by Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hell, Hellfire, the Diablo One expansion. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, also, also Sierra. Man, That's wild. Said, we're 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 just taking it back to the '90s. This LGC. We're not even in LGC 590. We're in 583. We should be talking about the '80s. Damn it! What happened in 1983? I don't know. Actually, uh, speaking of uh, uh, official things in Caesar Three, there there is actually a salad upcoming remaster. Uh, vodka. An an official no no an official remaster that's called A New Era, that is on Steam. Or I don't know if it's been released already or not. Probably. Yeah, it has. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so uh yeah, no, if you if you don't want to uh pay what's that? Twenty pounds for Pharaoh a new era, and you still have the original uh game or you own it on GOG. Go nuts. <laughs> Is the short version of that game called a new Pharaoh? <laughs> no, but the porn version's called Pharaoh Moans. A new Mo oh. Pharaoh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to tell us about your pheromones, you are more than welcome to. Head over to LinuxTeamCast.com, hit the contact button, leave us a message. You can do it. You can figure it out. I got faith in you. YouTube comments are all subject, along with Patreon comments. Probably not Odyssey comments, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. If you are working on a game, you want some pre-promotion, and you can string a couple of sentences together and look, put your face in the camera hole, come on the show. We'd love to talk to you. Are you reporting your game? 
from Unity to Godot. We would love to hear from you. Or are you just mm-hmm. making a game in Godot? Hey, yeah. we, we, want, we want those data points. That'd be awesome. Uh, send us a message. We'll get back in touch. Now, this week I found out through our hate mail that something is dead. And I'm like, that's fascinating because the thing that is dead didn't tell me it was dead. Yeah, that, that's like, you, that's getting like finding out you got fired when your entire department got like deleted over yeah, Twitter, right? Like, right, yeah. right. You're like, what? What? Ah. No, but I, I'm, I can still log in. Anyways, this is this come from Austin. It says, library is dead. Company is dead. What happens to the Odyssey channel? Assuming the protocol and community slash devs as is decentralized, what is supposed, as is supposed to be, it shouldn't be a huge issue to replicate. Also, Nate. I, I want to say, why didn't you include a link? Because it took me a minute if I can find this. Also, thanks for not including a link. Use, use email next time. <laughs> it took me a while to find this because uh, you remember library, library. It was a decentralized, uh, I think it was like blockchain based or something. I'm mm-hmm. not well steeped into this, but apparently the SEC sued him out of existence. And, you know, I did some like looking around like this isn't like government. I mean, government being government, but. They didn't show up for their trial and they didn't appeal and they had like a hundred thousand dollar fine leveraged against them so they're pacing out and the only reason i mean remotely thinking about this is because uh they spun the company off but the front end of this the web front end was called odyssey or still is because it still might be a you know around according to the scorpion with a frog in them mm-hmm. picture and uh when it comes to like all of the other YouTube alternatives like Odyssey was serviceable and we used it not because I was uploading stuff to it, just because it had a handy feature where it would just automatically clone our YouTube videos to our Odyssey channel. The good thing about it is it's open source and it's decentralized. So theoretically, this isn't going to go down, but like if Odyssey quits paying the bills for what they're hosting, that's uh, going to knock a chunk of it out. Uh, what's so, happen? so what? Someone would need to like host the new front end or. I don't know, like, in, I ever create a different front end or, I, you know, theoretically, this should work like torrents, man. So like, uh, if you, yeah, because if it's decentralized, I'm thinking like a, like a Mastodon thing where like you would have like multiple, you, you, you connect to like instance X, Y, or Z to, mm-hmm. your, and your, you can use any one instance to find the things in the others in mm-hmm. theory that, yeah. And given that it's all open source, it, it's not like it's dead, dead. I don't, yeah. So, I mean, the code's still going to be there. They're going to hand over the uh, Odyssey assets or whatever to satisfy creditors, which is, I guess is going to be the government. Um, womp womp, I guess. I mean, it kind of sucks because it doesn't kind of suck at all because we, you're still waiting on that YouTube competitor, man. Yeah, and, and, and anything <laughs> the one in, like, that the, was kind of taking off just yeah, got honestly, shut down. I at least had a little bit of traction. They were working <laughs> on it, and and then, then like that's that's the thing, right? Like the 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 hosting costs for something like YouTube. Basically, you have to have like some sort of decentralization in order for mm-hmm. it to like not cost a fortune. So so like yeah, it's it's kind of sad to see one of like the larger players developing in that space go away. But hopefully, hopefully this like galvanizes people in the community. Hopefully, like we get some stalwarts who are willing to pick it up and and keep it going because it's not a bad idea. Well, what is the other one? PeerTube. Who remembers yeah, Peer- that? Uh, PeerTube. Yeah, PeerTube is still they're around. Still around. Yeah. The problem is, as much like Odyssey and PeerTube, even the people who champion it, they don't they don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> like if we all just started using it. Like, <laughs> There's a if lot I, of people saying, "Yeah, you the, the thing. If, everyone uses using more, the thing, but they're if not more using people them. would you would just use Linux, then we would start making games for them, right?" Sent for my Windows 11 machine. Yeah, <laughs> <sighs> yeah this, this made me a little bit uh, not as sad as it probably should make me to see something like this. Uh, but they do say Odyssey's going to live on. It's going to end up in like receivership. I'm sure somebody's going to pick it up. Yeah, if something, I mean, yeah, I would definitely feel something worse if something like Lemmy got torched. Like, right. Yeah. Leave, uh, uh, honestly, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't have that much like emotional investment with it. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, there is a little bit of, I mean, we have, uh, I think, 500 plus followers on Odyssey. Hmm. I mean, from like zero work on our. <laughs> yeah, none, no promotion. At nothing. At like, all. it. It just automatically just copies our YouTube feed. So I mean, uh, uh, 
uh, Mark, ne Nebula, Nebula in principle is an interesting idea. Create our own video hosting service uh, that is like subscription only. Like uh, Floatplane is similar, right? Like there, there are uh, there's there's Dropout as well. Uh, there, there's there's a couple of these these companies that are like producing like really high quality content, mm -hmm. uh, and they're they're putting it behind a paywall. And I think like yeah, ultimately I think that's that's the future, right? Uh, well, that's for, for, sustainable. Yeah, that, and and that's mm -hmm. and that's what they're going for is they want to have like a sustainable ecosystem for creators. But we're dealing with like the second generation. We're we're definitely into the second generation of people who've been brought up as uh, content's free. It's all paid for by yeah. ads and ones. But in the life cycle of anything, they got to turn like okay, investor money's dry it up, and we got to start making money. Then we start seeing things like you know, we Net end up with YouTube. Netflix is raising their prices again. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Prime Prime is also raising the prices uh, for uh, streaming video. Uh, it's it's the, it's the squeeze, man. It's the squeeze. It, I mean, it, it is that cycle, man, where it starts out like everything's a good deal, then it just gets to that point. Then, but you know what? You know what? As much as it sucks to see things uh, go through that, the next thing starts up. What, what, what do you think the next thing is? I mean, I mean, you, you it's none, none of us fucking know because uh, <laughs> if we did, we'd be working on that now and then we'd be rich, yes, right? Yes, we, like, we would all be rich. Yes. <laughs> so if you have a good idea, send us some hate mail send so us you can get mail. us rich. Yeah. It's, it's going to be changing. Like the next thing's already taken place. None of us play around with it. I mean, it, it's things like TikTok. Oh, God. Yes, TikTok is uh, uh, <laughs> the popular yeah. one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Nemo, in shittification. <laughs> I, 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 I prefer, in, in shittification is good, I prefer the squeeze, because, you know, you're getting your balls squeezed. It's not. I mean, we can throw fancy words on standard operating procedure for, yeah, startup, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, g g give it a name, call it out. Call it out for the shitty, shittiness that it is, right? I don't know, it's like people just are starting to discover this, and like, Guys, <laughs> this isn't new. This has been happening for a while. Right. <laughs> it, it, it hasn't quite been happening like this for a while. I didn't tell that to like Enron. I, I, I don't know. Didn't their, did their executive kill themselves or something? Am I, am I misremembering that? I don't know. I, corporations have been doing the dumb for a long time, so. Yes. I, yes, I, I, I too look for the next thing. Stop listening to MBAs. But you got to remember, you got to remember, YouTube started from nothing. YouTube was not a Google property. It yes, was a couple of guys yeah. fucking around. So uh, is that what you get at, Jordan? Is like, that's not possible. But now it's a whole lot cheaper to spool up something like that. Just maybe not at scale. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Well, I, certainly I, not I, at scale and certainly not with the... No, not, 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 at, not at scale. But like, again, go, going back to the decentralized point, like I, I would think like that would be required. Otherwise, there would be like such a massive upfront cost. Mm -hmm. And with the content quality, because as much as we complain about YouTube, they do offer something close to 4K video. But nobody, uh, nobody watches that. But yeah, it's 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 one of the features that not, are kind not, of expected, not until we so. get like 4K phones, right? <laughs> even like, <laughs> e yeah, even with like 4K. Yeah, how many times have you been like, yeah, that looks great. Let me see what it looks like. And uh, like you think you're watching it in HD, and you check the quality thing, and like that's at 360p, ha. Huh. <laughs> it's usually yeah, it's usually just 720p because mm -hmm. everyone's got big screens now. So even if you have the default player, it's still 720p. But it, yeah, it is releasing something to compete with YouTube at this point. It's kind of like Epic trying to release the Epic Game Store in the state that they did, hoping to compete with Steam. Um, I mean, I mean, it, th they they could have spent all that money on making their product better instead of a you YouTube know, competitor. They could instead of buying oh, Bandcamp, they oh, should have tried to make a YouTube competitor. Patreon, yeah. they no, sold yeah. Bandcamp. They made a you, you know, you know what they should have done? <laughs> they should have turned Fortnite into the fucking YouTube competitor. Well, yeah, that, that, they that, wanted that, to that, turn Fortnite that, into that their kids. metaverse. I would have trapped those kids forever, man. Well, here's the actual like horrible thing, man. Like a lot of like breaking things are premiered inside of Fortnite. Star Wars. Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. You did not know what the fuck was going on in the last Skywalker if you weren't in Fortnite that one time to hear them for a speech. Okay, this, this is how you know it's time for us. You know, you kids get off our lawn. Like when we hear like, you know, concerts taking place in Fortnite, we're just like, get the hell out of here. Uh, like that would never cross our minds. But, you know, if you're fucking 
14 and all your friends like, yeah, we're going to go watch the concert. And we're we're going to go watch Dead Mouse. We're going to go watch mm-hmm. a recording of Dead Mouse. Mm-hmm. We had to pay like $15 in V-Bucks, but we're going to go watch the concert. No, no hang no, on. No, 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 hang on. No, no, no. I'm just going to say, like, in their defense, I've also paid money to go to a Daft Punk concert, and I know damn well that was not Daft Punk on stage. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say, have you, have you ever bought like a DVD of a, of a concert? Because that's, I guess that's kind of the same thing too. Oh, right? like of a live show. Yeah, like a live show. Same difference, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, not, not, uh, it's, it's, it's weird. Like once you start like deconstructing, it's like, ah, it's not actually that different from what we were that's doing. It, but, but it's different. The kids are dumb. It, it's Arr. different in a subtle way, and therefore I hate it. Yeah, it's, it's not. In it's a not video exact. game. No. How <laughs> would people play with you? Oh, right, Linux. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Fair enough, ladies and gentlemen. That's gonna do it. We love your feedback. We love off of it. So send in some notes if you get a way to fix YouTube and uh, maybe you know what's going to go down with uh, Odyssey or you just want to chat in our direction. Hop in our Discord. Send us some nuts if you're a squirrel. Hop in our IRC. All the places this chat goes on the other six days of the week. Link it up if you're a Twitch sub, if you're a patron member. Speaking of patron, we got one of those too. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You get a gang of extra content for supporting the show. We appreciate it. Also, we got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. And, uh, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Can we cue some music and, uh, go get into something else? Yeah. Why not? I allow it. I allow it. Ladies and gentlemen on that bomb, a loud bombshell, I guess I should say. <laughs> you could so always find us <laughs> doing this right here on Twitch. Uh, you know, you go, if you're a patron, go listen to pre pre super shows. And we were like theorizing, like how many services can we stream to now? Hmm. More on that at 13. But if you want to get in touch with the M1 Zitter, you know that at Finstone, we have a federated timeline, mast.linuxgamecast.com. You can find me there. I'm just at Vin. And our website has a Mastodon account now because I set up the activity pub thing. If you can find it, follow it too. I am the God Emperor Jordan. You can find me in my sleeping bag over my head on Twitter at The Burning Fool or on Mastodon at Frojo at mast.linuxgamecast.com. I, I don't have anything witty to add this week, so yeah, just uh, Mastodon. Uh, and I counted four with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. If, uh, yeah, <laughs> for doing the decentralization, might as well start there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Decenter yourself. It's like the anti Marie Kondo. Before you mentor yourself, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, credits. yeah, yeah. You, you know, you need to be decentered so that you can be mentored, right? Or you become rentered. I did. Shut up. <laughs> Nentered. <laughs> uh, we got. We got to thank the people flying through space, uh, getting blasted by the bla- uh, gamma ray bursts from black hole at the center of our galaxy. Omega Sartherum, our executive producers, Bob Bram, Scott Michaud, Tom McCast, Mike G, uh, uh, drummer Tomas, Hakim David, Eship, and Ian, and our little Nikki fans, Super Dusto, Empty, Glorious Eggroll, and Noobs. I just realized the I didn't do this shot over here. So no, right right back in a trudgy yeah, for a yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin Nubbin, Darkwing, System T, Danzing, Joe, Ogi One, and Kyrillo. And hey. enough notes, enough of Basil Chat. Good luck with that. Random lowercase I. Kim. I'll <laughs> use random lowercase I as if I damn well please, Jordan Swan. Zatherus Gaming. Tim, yeah, see, I got one. <laughs> Graf. Yeah. All of our fine upstanding Replay cannibals. Gaming PT. Portugal represent. <laughs> Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox, Neuraldius, Noculus, John, Eshep, Gabitron, Unoid, DS, and Joe, and Gajori. Thank you for buying stuff for the studio off our wish zones. But until next week, beautiful people, um... Dying of fire. We'll see you then. Toodles. Toodles? Uh, toodles. <laughs> toodles. Would you buy something that said toodles of noodles? Would you have questions if it just came in an indescript package? It looked like cup of noodles. Oh, but... to- to- toodles. Of, so it would be like goodbye to noodles. Five dudes.